Hey, what's good, YouTube? Today, we're going to react to uh, Swish Out. The NBA playoffs has not made any sense, but I love it. Hey, that is facts, man. This NBA uh, playoffs hadn't, haven't made any sense at all. Like, the fucking Heat beating the Bucks is crazy. The Knicks beating the Cavs is crazy. Like, bro, in that series, I had the Cavs winning in, uh, what, six? But, bro, the fucking Knicks just cooked them. Like, they bullied them. Uh, for the fucking, uh, what's it called? Uh, the Heat, bro, I had the Bucks won it in, 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 what, four or five? Bro, the Heat won, the, won that shit in five games, bro. They beat the one seed. Like, that's crazy. Like, shout out to Jimmy fucking Butler. But, uh, what else? Uh, who, bro, I, I didn't see, uh, the Kings versus the Warriors going to seven games. Like, bro, I thought the, uh, Warriors would close it out in game six. But, no, the Kings went in there, gotta, gotta, uh, gotta win. But, you know, they got cooked by Curry in, in fucking Game 7. But, bro, they still did their shit. So, I was like, damn. But, let's hey, see. What's Swiss Rock got to say? This video is going to be a little bit different. With so much going on, I am itching to get behind this mic and just talk and vent about everything I'm seeing. It's not going to be stat-based. I have a video coming out this weekend. Everything that 2023 NBA playoffs has proven so far. And that one would be more stat predicated. But this one, Opinion I based. literally just want to vent. Yeah, Let's vent. talk about the series that's about to break NBA Twitter. Hey, the, the Lakers, Lakers versus, the versus the Warriors. Let's talk about their man. previous series. The Kings versus Golden State. First of all, man, big shout out to Sacramento. Mike Brown, he coached his ass yeah, off. Yeah, Mike Aaron Brown did shit. He went toe to toe with Stephen Curry for the majority of the series Facts. with a broken finger, and it was his first playoffs. Facts. Malik Monk, he gave that team so much energy and so much life off the bench, probably outplaying the whole Golden State bench by himself. Probably spoke a little bit too soon after that game six, but I respect the energy and I respect the passion. Did. Keegan Murray Jordan was, Poole was he atrocious. Was a shaky in the that beginning, series. But he contributed significantly to some of those wins. So. As an organization and a team that's never been there before, you have to tip your cap to them. They played their asses off. Facts. Stephen Curry and <laughs> that game seven performance, bro. Beautiful. Usually when a player is Master 35 class. years old, 36, and he's still hanging on and he's still playing at an extremely high level, you can still tell they're past their prime. Typically because their athleticism has dwindled and they're using more post moves, they patent their perimeter game, etc. That's typically Curry's they still out there the running cardio, man. Stephen Curry, and I'm dead serious when I say this, he might be the only player that at 35 years old is literally at the best stage of his career prime wise. Nice. Because Facts. he's completely transformed his body to endure more contact, and you see the results. It's a lot. Facts, like, <laughs> like, bro, Curry be uh, taking more bumps now. Like, like, bro, Curry really like gets to the spot that he needs to get to. Like, like, so effortless now, man. And it's like his game is like, like, so much more like refined now. Like, bro, he, like, bro, he's like, bro. Obviously, he's gonna be shooting threes and shit. But it's like, but it's like Curry now. Bro, he shoot threes, uh, uh, go to the paint more, mid range. Like, bro, his three level scoring now it 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 is like so great. His three level scoring now is like so great, and it's like, and it's like he just seemed like more comfortable, more comfortable doing shit now. Like, it's crazy. Of course, he don't get because he's a lot more proficient as a three level scorer and yes. he utilizes it now. Yes. Like, bro, around the rim, yes. this man is magical. Yes. Because he's never yes, his three level scoring now is like. Top tier, bro. Like this thing, get where you want to get to, or how high he can jump, or how fast he runs. It's allowed his game to age like wine, and it's like yes. he's thirty-five going on twenty-five. Like wine, because he has the best cardiovascular endurance of any player yeah. ever. Yeah, he do, For a bro. series, that's that's just hard to keep up with. Like LeBron said, if you make one mistake against this man, you're going to pay, and he does that. And the Kings, I think he just broke their will, especially in that second half of the game seven. Stephen Curry has gotten to this point of his career. Where it's like he completely unlocked the formula to his game. Like early yes. in his career, especially in that 2016 finals, if his three point shot wasn't really on, you yeah, can see done. his impact significantly hindered. Yes. Nowadays, and this is why I believe. Yes. He's see, that's what, see, that's what I was talking about last year when he was going against the Celtics. Like his game is just so much more refined. It is crazy. It is crazy. Ultimate complete form. Now he, now he, he like just don't settle ball. for he's the threes no more. On. He's so comfortable attacking the basket and putting the ball on the floor, um, attacking you from all angles of the half court, using Max. how scared you are of his gravity to his advantage, that he's quite literally become unstoppable. Facts. Memphis versus L.A., and I'm not going to talk about every series, just the ones that I really feel like talking Man, about right now, I'm not going to lie. The Grizzlies are the biggest frauds probably that I've ever <laughs> seen in my <laughs> entire frauds. life. Like, literally. John Morant and 
I, I really respect how he took accountability after the game and talked about how his off the court stuff probably contributed to their season a bit. I respect all of that. But John Morant, where he is right now, I don't think he can come close to being the best player on a championship team. Unlike Steph, and I hate to compare these two, it's just so unfair, but I have to in this context, just for a brief second, he's way too reliant on his athleticism. Yes. The Grizzlies, they were the ah, best transition. And he don't know how to NBA land either. That so bothered like, me a bit because in the playoffs, they slowed look down. Look at this, bro. I talked about that in my Falling video. Falling so chaotic. It would be so glaring in the first round, and it was. Ja, especially for that damn team. He has to patent his half-court bag and add more layers to his game. Right. He has to become a much better perimeter shooter or else they're just going to build that wall and that style. It is going to peak. The Grizzlies right. overall, they're just such an immature damn team. Like, I remember last year after Minnesota stole game one and Memphis tied the series in game two. Jaws walking around in the tunnel talking about, stay on that side, bro, stay on that side. Everybody that doubted us, like, bro, they got their mission. They stole home court, bro. What is wrong with you? Dylan Brooks, after game two where LeBron, they stole home court in game one. He talking like LeBron, oh, and all this. Like, they have no IQ of the situation. And overall, <laughs> no IQ is friends. friends. The Lakers, they, they're just dangerous. Like, they're yes. so damn deep. LeBron is yes. probably on the deepest team of his entire career. And they're not reliant on LeBron to have monster games or AD to have monster games. They can attack you from different angles. I believe in every single game or damn near every single game in that series, they had a top leading score that was different. It can be Austin Reeves one night. It could be Roy Hachimura. It, it can be obviously AD. be LeBron or AD. Mm -hmm. You can't really trust D'Angelo Russell to consistently do it. Facts. But on any given night, we know he has that talent where he can just explode. So to me, for a team that's so multifaceted offensively, and they are monsters defensively, defensively. like it's yes. a tight to score against. And yes. to me, they have the best defensive player in the league. Like I know Jaron Jackson won. That's cool. Anthony Davis is the best defensive player in the league when he's on. Like, I don't Facts. think nobody says Facts. That bro, bro, a, bro, AD got like what twenty six blocks. Um, um, during the last series, like bro, AD was on. Yeah, he, he was turned. Two man defensive line. He got like, like seven blocks. Anthony Davis. And, like in one dangerous. game and shit, man. I will say, AD, with this he just State Lakers matchup. I'm very intrigued to see how the Lakers. Right, his like rim protection is top tier. Because Memphis's man. offense is so limited, it plays into Anthony Davis's strength. All Facts. they can do is really attack the basket, and he's like the best protector yeah. in the NBA. And when Luke Kennard got hurt, they just couldn't score. So I, I can't wait to see how that matchup and how they align. Jimmy Hemi Butler. Jimmy Hemi Butler. Fans, get out my DMs. Nobody was hating on y'all. Nobody did. Nah, Jimmy was talking shit to Drew Hardy. And it's crazy because Drew Hardy is one of the top uh, perimeter defenders in the league. And Jimmy was cooking that man. Bad. Like y'all. Bad. Remember, I literally just pointed out what y'all displayed. Jimmy is him, season. man. Obviously, like, it wasn't that important to y'all. I didn't believe Jimmy nothing. Butler specifically, he just flips that switch every single playoff as Play soon as Jimmy, he begins man. to doubt his team. Nobody really doubts Jimmy specifically. I always say yeah, that the man heat. needs more help. But he definitely he just, needs more help. It's something about that guy. Also, give Miami a lot of credit collectively. A I'm lot. not a big fan of surrounding your best player with a bunch of undrafted talent, but they stepped up. Duncan Robinson, I believe he came in for Tyler Hero and hit like 70% of his threes. Gabe Vincent hit some pretty big shots. So did Caleb Martin. Kevin Love, I believe, I think they're like undefeated since they inserted him into the starting lineup. So yeah, they, they are. rallied Shout behind Jimmy, Love, and that's man. why they're in the second round. And who knows, bro? The Cavs just have a real shot throw him away. Finals. But also, Milwaukee, bro. Like... <laughs> I was so damn disappointed. I know Giannis yeah, basically missed too. those first three games, but I mean, you blew essentially like a double digit lead in the fourth quarter Twice. in game four. And then you came back around and blew like a 16 point lead in game five. And Mike Bullenhoser, I don't want to talk too much about him because I know his brother just passed, but those timeouts, that, that situation, it, it was just so bad. And their half court offense, it looked so damn shaky. It kind of looked like that throughout the season, but I was saying, okay, Chris Middleton was hurt. I gave him a little bit of a pass. But in the playoffs, it just showed up. And Giannis, he was scared to touch the ball. He missed like 13 free throws. Yeah, it was an that is absolute true. collapse. Even Giannis got work on the free throw. Lopez, bro, I, I was so disappointed. Like the Bucks, they were one of the best defensive teams in the entire NBA with a great interior presence with Giannis, Bobby Porter, Brooke Lopez, who was second in defensive player of the league uh, votings. And Jimmy Butler just torched them inside. Like Jimmy Easy Butler right work. now currently leads the league in points in the paint. That's mainly because of what he did to Milwaukee. So collectively, Easy it was work. a collapse. They were fraudulent a little bit offensively in the half court, especially with Chris Middleton not quite looking like himself. And all that stuff got exposed. The Knicks that and the Cavs, right. I'll keep this one pretty brief. First of all, shout out to New York because I didn't think they would win that series. 
but I truly underestimated the physicality of the playoffs and how much that really means. Jared Allen and Evan Mobley, they just got punished on the glass. Like, they, yeah, they Mitch Robinson, I'm gonna say for the weekend when I really talk about it and dive deep into it, but they got punished. They just they had no physicality against Mitchell Robinson and Julius Randle. They got every single second chance point, every single offensive rebound, and you can just see the clear physicality difference between those two franchises. And right now, the Cavs, they're they're not ready. They're a regular season team. The Suns, and man. I picked this team to get to the NBA Finals, and right now, I'm going to keep hey, it They don't got no bench. They ain't getting to no damn Finals. No. They're just not. Like, I they don't got no bench. The they don't got no bench, bro. Like, they bench is dog shit. Like, like KD and DB basically got to play like damn near the whole game, bro, just for the for them to have a chance. I'm going to keep it 100 with you. They ain't getting to no damn Finals. Nah. They're just not. Nah. Like, I underestimated the depth part of everything, and that's very, very significant. Right now, Kevin Durant and Devin Booker, do you know they're one and two in minutes per game in Damn. the playoffs? That just can't happen. Yeah, that's Their bad. bench essentially gives them nothing, nothing consistently. DeAndre Ayton, every single time I watch him, I feel Monty Williams, and I understand why. Bro, DeAndre, bro, the Suns need to trade Aiden, okay? The Suns need to trade Aiden ASAP. Because this man, he have no, like, 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 aggression, nothing. Like, bro, it was a clip of... Of Jokic getting like three offensive rebounds, like bro, he was trying to tip the ball in, was missing. So it was like he kept, so it was like he was tipping the ball up, trying to get it, and it, and KD was trying to uh, you, you you know battle for the battle for the rebound against Jokic. This nigga Aiden was standing outside, like out of bounds on the sideline, bro, just watching, just watching KD battle Jokic for a rebound. It's like yo, this nigga is trash. This nigga is trash, bro. He's done. He's done. Trade him. He was so frustrated with that man. Trade he him. He doesn't assert himself enough offensively, defensively. Trade. Look at this shit, bro. Go up. He can just sit there and kind of watch. I saw a clip and Nikola Jokic basically. Yes. Like this is the clip. This is the clip. Thank you, Swisho. Look, so look at this clip. Look at it. Like, he, that's just look at it. Third. This man is standing outside, like out of bounds. Like KD is like, help me, bro. Yo, look at KD, bro. Bro. Look at Chris Paul trying to box this man out. Look, look at it. So while he was on a He's trying. He's like Jokic, look, KD is trying to get the ball. KD's like a kid to Jokic right here. Like, he... And, and this nigga standing outside of bounds. Like, what is... Bro, you're done. You're done, okay? Nikola Jokic basically playing volleyball to himself while he was on a big... Like, Aiden is the only big like, that can at least he, that's just not a match thing. up that's with Jokic, piece. bro. And Chris this Paul, nigga's just sitting I there. I get mad at him for not being able to contribute enough offensively. He's done. Because he's 38. Like, even LeBron slowed down a little bit at 38. So, you know he's going to. Yeah, that's And true. he's always been injured. So, I can't expect more of him now at 38 years old. No, I'm kind of disappointed in Chris Paul because, like, bro, you could be 38, but it's like, bro, elite, like, you should be able to at least make open three pointers. Like this nigga can't even hit open threes. Like this nigga's like shot is clicked. All he's good for is a good fucking pick and roll mid range jumper. That's all he's good for at this point, bro. Everything else, this nigga's butt. Enough offensively because he's thirty eight. Like even LeBron slowed down a little bit at thirty eight, so you know he's going to. And he's always been injured, so I can't expect more of him now at thirty eight years old. Yeah, it's just not enough. That team, and bro, I know I picked them. I'm cool with being wrong. To get this clear, I'm not Skip Bayless. I don't have a team in the NBA. I'm a fan of the game, and I love watching the game. So I don't care who's right, who's wrong. But that team is so damn thin that they really can't afford for Kevin Durant or Devin Booker no. to be off like Kevin Durant was no, last night. Like, when he just got locked up by KCP, Aaron Gordon, whoever they put on him, they took turns locking that man up. They can't afford I think he just had a bad shoot tonight, to be honest. Have that because they're too thin elsewhere. So Phoenix is cool. It's a good roster on paper. You got Kevin Durant. You got Devin Booker. They're very top heavy. But I don't see them winning anything this year. I don't even really see them to pass this round. And they're just too thin. They're just too thin. And lastly, Denver. yeah, I got the Nuggets in uh, five. I'm going to be honest, and I'm speaking for myself. I really owe them an apology. Now, in my bold predictions video, I did pick them to be the number one seed. But I didn't really think they were like a strong number one seed at all. And they're proving that they are. Yeah, First they are proving all, it. The head of the snake. They're cooking the this. This man is just Mr. Reliable. And I hate to compare these two, but they're always compared. Unlike the player he's always compared to, Joel Embiid. Joel Embiid, I love Joel Embiid. He's so, he was so hey. damn dominant. He's the MVP to me for sure. He's more dominant than Jokic. But he's not there like this man. Facts. Second of all, it was to me underrated about Jokic. 
he is an animal on that glass. He is. Going against Rudy Gobert, who's led the league in rebounds multiple times, and Cat, who's been a Coke double digit rebounder before. And now DeAndre Cook, Cook this man, Cat, man. He's like seven feet. This man is averaging like 14 boards a game. It's not physical. It's not like Kevon Looney where he's falling everywhere. It's not like Dennis Rodman or nah. Sabonis or something like that. But it's effective. Yeah, he this just know where the ball is going. How to tip the ball to himself and put his body in the right positions and to kind of play volleyball with himself on the glass and get all those extra possessions. I heard Paul George talking about it. And it, like I said, it's not physical. It doesn't look like, oh, man, he's laboring. But it's very effective. Also, he's been so much more aggressive in the playoffs, which I always wanted him to do. Okay, it's cool to have all the regular season acknowledgement. Like, and I break the bar, I know. His PER is through the roof. His warp, his wind share. Look at his efficiency, bro. He's shooting 60% from the field. His true shooting percentage is so damn high. Okay, that's cool. But in the playoffs, he went from shooting 14 shots a game in the regular season to now 21. And to me, in order for them to go anywhere, he has to be aggressive. I always wondered if Jokic fell too much in love with playing the game the right way and making the right passes and making the right plays, which is cool. But in the playoffs, sometimes you got to put the team on your back and assert yourself offensively because your Facts. teammates won't have it going and you're the superstar. And last night specifically yeah, against Phoenix in that game too, done. he definitely did that. Also, Denver, they're pretty underratedly deep. Like Bruce Brown, he's had like a revelation playing with Denver and getting away from Kyrie and Kevin Durant and that crazy chaotic system. And you put him in a more cohesive system now offensively with Jokic, and he's really showing you what he can be. Aaron Gordon, he's just he's an been athletic phenomenal. wing body to have that you can throw on players like Kevin Durant, LeBron, Andrew Wiggins, Tatum, etc. And offensively, he can stretch the floor a bit, and he's just a ridiculous fourth, fifth option. MPJ, it's a little inconsistent, but we know the talent is there. He's yeah. 6'10". On Price. any given night, he can look like a damn Kevin Durant-esque prodigy. Um, Jamal Murray, we know what Jamal Murray is. Mm -hmm. Contavious Caldwell Pope, he's a great two-way player. Like, he's a legitimate 3 and D. So that team... Jesus they, Christ, that passes... Uh -huh. Crazy. If you guys like this video, like this video. I just got behind the mic and started talking about the playoffs because they've been that great. So if you hey, they have been great. I've been loving these playoffs these so far. Type of videos, like the video. I definitely been loving these playoffs so far, man. It, it just sucks that some people, that some people like you know get injury, get injuries and shit. Like Kawhi got injured. Like man, like that Suns and Clipper series could have been phenomenal. It was good to see Russell Westbrook have like you know a rebirth and shit, but. But it would have been nice to see Kawhi, Kawhi at least, you know, play the whole goddamn series. But uh, what is it called? Uh, Jimmy, Jimmy showing his ass and cooking the fucking Bucks was crazy phenomenal. Because I had the Bucks in, what, five, four games, and Jimmy did those niggas dirty. And he cooked Drew Holiday, so, so that was crazy. It was crazy because we saw Drew Holiday, you know, lock so many other people up. But it's like, this man, Jimmy just, bro, he just cooked him. He cooked him. Man, but, bro, I've been loving these players, to be honest. But now, it's time for my Lakers to face the goddamn Warriors. Like, that's going to be a show. A show, man. Like, whoo. Damn, it's going to be hard for my Lakers, to be to be honest. To be honest. To keep up with fucking Steph. But, man, I'm loving it. I'm loving it. Because I'm stuck between, uh, you know, a rock and a hard place. Because, bro, I want my Lakers to obviously win a championship. Because, like, you know. That's my team and shit, but it's like, but it's like I like to see greatness when it comes to start, when it comes to terms of like you know Stephen Curry like bro, bro imagine this man fucking uh go back to back and like win a championship this year too like bro that'd be some crazy shit bro that'd be some crazy shit to see, and and, and it's like bro that'd be some crazy shit for the Warriors dynasty, but it's like, but it's like damn man like bro. Man, it's just a what if with the Warriors. Then it's like, bro, the Lakers my team, man. So it's like, obviously I'm cheering for the Lakers because, like, you know, you know, LeBron and AD, they gotta get the job done, okay? They gotta get the job done. But man, if the Warriors somehow win, like, bro, damn, it'd be crazy if Steph wins a fucking championship and then goes back to back, like that'd be wild. That'd be wild. Um, but you know, like, comment, subscribe. Suggest anything else from Toronto. You know, down below in the comments. But check out the next one.